And we return to the dungeon beneath the dungeon, I think. <laughs> I don't know what, what else we're beneath. The dungeon beneath the dungeon. Dungeonception, my fellows. Let's, uh, let's dive deeper. Um, we're doing pretty well in this, this, uh, playthrough here. I, I'm very, very confident. But that's usually where it goes wrong. I mean, the ever burning flame is a nice unit that cannot do anything. It cannot receive anything bad except damage, but it also cannot dish anything out itself. It is just a little wall, basically. And we'll put it in front of Jack so Jack has some support. Now these headless guys are usually very troublesome, but the horror specs I hope will make up for that. So, is there anything else we want to say here? If I put you down there, and like this, then we'll be destroying the headless simulator here in the first round. And then we will only be taking the damage from these two here, because the zombies are really slow, it won't get an attack. Oh, it will get an attack off, what am I saying? Because the Mei, our hero, is very slow itself. Right. I think this is still about the best we get. Oh, and he attacks randomly, so this could be bad. Hopefully it is not. Time shall tell. Oh, and we get poisoned, right? The Ar Argent Fang Beast Hero is poisonous and changes lanes. Which is really nasty. Because it will continually try to poison various opponents. Being poisoned means that after you attack, you will take one damage. Does not stack. Uh, this ancient urn is kind of a waste. Oh, why do you why do you only have ah? Look at that. The squire boosted my hero instead of boosting the mate of the sun, which is fine in this case because it means less overkill damage on the ancient urn. But it was not what I planned. If I move Mariana up here, we will kill this simulator this turn, then and then we can start doing the proper combo here, which means we get the kill on the Argent Fan next turn, I think. Regardless of what else happens. Boom, boom, boom. Very good. And indeed, we go to 8 attack now on the Mate of the Sun. Oh boy. We are, we are, I'm setting some personal records here. 13 health on the Squire. And eight attack on a single character. That is quite crazy. And I mean, the Argent Fang has six HP, so this is over. Boom! Sniped. <laughs> and our Doom character just keeps going, which is also kind of fun. Potion of experience. I, I really want to level up our, what's it called? Horror specs once more time. Hopefully dealing three damage per doom. Flame adept. Also damages enemies in the same column. Column being the vertical lines. So that is really, really strong. Very, very cool. Would like to have you someday. An Avia Koran Guard. Counter summon a dove. And doves come in with zero attack, one health, but still really cool. Basically spawns one extra HP, and if you combo off of summon units, that's really nice. I think elves in general seems to combo, combo a lot off of summon units. And this is a unit that I unlocked on that run that we didn't finish. And Rogue. It's poisonous and inexhaustible. Also, I think we gotta try out sometime. But I, I, I don't think we can argue with this team here, so we're just gonna keep going. Venenic Assimilate targets a random enemy in any lane, paralyzing attack. And that would be really bad on our Sun Mage here. So, that's where we might suffer a bit. Do it like this. These two together will destroy this urn, and then. The hero will destroy the urn. Except, of course, I don't want Mariana in this lane. Although that's not true. Hold on. If I don't do it like that, 
If I put my hero down here, then we will kill this urn in this turn. Barring the fact that the horse specs may help, let's ignore you because it's random. Then in the next turn, the squire will deal 1 damage to the ancient urn, and then the mate of the sun will deal 8, meaning 7 overkill damage to the, to the ancient urn here. That's not what we want. So this, this may mean the squire both boosts the wrong character, but at least we're not overkilling an urn by a ton doing it this way. And we want to switch these two around. Yes. I didn't see how much damage he does, but we'll find out soon, I'm sure. And the Horde Specs does help. Very nice. Exactly where we needed him to. And we got the power in the right spot anyway. No, we didn't. Alright. Still fine. Still doing, what, 9 in this lane here? Or I can come up here and finish off this deteriorating simile, which I think might be better. Because then we get the guaranteed combo here next turn, killing. And go. Ah, except it makes us more vulnerable to the paralyzing attack, which hit the paladin this turn. Or last turn. Alright, this was fine. Oh, so when you're paralyzed, you don't get to do your round end ability either. Let's see here. Paralyzed cannot move or attack until the end of their turn. Ah, see, it's not explained here. Mm hmm. There's a little bit of missing in the tooltip. It's fine. It's fine. I mean, it makes the sense that it doesn't. He doesn't get to do his round end effect, I guess. And I think we have lethal here. So let's just let it go. Oh, we did not have lethal then. Close. Oh, we did. <laughs> All is well. And in fact, we clear the board. Lovely. Put XP in the same spot, and we're going for the merchant up here. What do we get? Welcome back. Buy a thing. I will. We have seven coins. Titan's ring. Extra health. Dove's Band, extra speed, would, which would be kind of nice on the Maiden's side. I kind of like that he goes after the Squire, though. So I think I prefer it as is. is. Let's get him an added style, I suppose. First of all, we're going to put it on the Horror Specs and see if it does anything. No, he still has no attack. So then it goes on here, and then now he's even stronger. High, high DPS... Paralyzing attacks on the Mage of the Sun would be absolutely devastating. Let's hope that never happens. Feast Caller. Follow up. Restore two health to a damaged ally. Bonus objective. Kill the Golden Wisp. That's a new thing. What does a Golden Wisp do, you say? Well, a Golden Wisp is an elemental that disappears at the end of the second round. A round ended moves. Okay. But we are already killing it here, I think. No, because it the uh, Jack doesn't get to attack, except if I do it like this. Now all is well. Uh, Doom, oh, Doom gain one power. And here we have Feast Caller, killing follow up a sword, two health to a damaged ally, right. They have eight damage, so the, I mean, the next turn, the Mage of the Sun will one-shot one of these guys. I think I like it like this. And our tanky dudes are right tanky. Nothing will ever get through. We got the Golden Wisp. All is well. Except right now we're doing 9 damage to this Lycanthrope. Why is it down to 2 health already? I think the Horde Specs must have hit it a bit. That seems like a bit of overkill. So, the way to work around it though is kind of interesting. We put him down here. Now we're chesting stuff. The Lycanthrope here will die. Good. Let me think this through. This Lycanthrope will die. I wonder if you, the Squire, will do his round 
end ability, because then it's going to boost him even more, dealing a ton of damage next turn. The, the Feast Caller here only has 8 health. Okay. Uh, we might not have to do it like that then. And this one has 8. There then. Right? Although it doesn't matter if the horse backs is exhausted. Ah, but we don't want it in the same lane as the squire. And the squire doesn't need to attack either. We can do it like this then. Now we're losing this entire lane. This is how we'll do it. The Mate of the Sun keeps the attack that it's been building up, or the power. So, this Lycranthrope is very dead. Once it gets its turn, and when he, once the Mate gets its turn, it will attack the Mate first, but that's fine, I suppose. With what, three? Just enough for it to survive. Two here and two there, everything is just fine and dandy. Overwhelming power achievement unlocked. What does that do? Deal 10 or more damage to a single unit with one attack. That's from the mage here. Very cool. And we have lethal. Very good. Boom. Kill the golden wisp. All the bonus objectives. Collect that money. And the horde specs levels up. No way, deal 4 damage to a random enemy each time you trigger Doom. That is crazy. I wasn't even sure that we would get to 3 because I thought that would be overpowered. <laughs> and then it went to 4. Alright. Thank you, game. What do we have here? Sword Dancer. Elf Fighter has plus 2 attack while at maximum health. Very interesting. Fae Edit. Poisonous allied units have exit to attack. Very good. And every Corian guard. So here's the combo, right? The two L's here, they combo together. Fader Adept will boost all the doves that the, this guard might spawn. That is pretty crazy. Another good combo in here. There's definitely a lot of combo potential in this game. You gotta find those, I think, to win. Targets are random. We have a, what? Slypian? Clypian? Simulate. Targets a random enemy in any lane. Counter green shield. Oh, I don't think I've seen you before. Very cool. And we've got this pit making sure that I cannot summon all my units here. That is too bad. So it gave me the ever-growing flame. I don't think I can decide which one I get. <clears throat> uh, and I cannot change the order of these items. It goes ever-burning torch first, then spirit shackle. No, that's not correct. Battle start and battle start. Okay. Uh, this is where we get Jack. So, the artifact before the hero ability, which is important to know, I think. Do it like that. They are going to chew through the ever-burning flame here really quickly, though. And then we will move the Divine Protector off it up by then, I think. Uh, this is going to be a tricky one. The horror specs dealing 4 damage, though, yeah, when you kill stuff, it means for the urns as well. So I think I will be okay, or we will be okay. 12 health on the hero, under the hero. This might be a rough one. Oh, and you hit a random unit, so you hit my... Mage of the Sun. If they take out the Mage of the Sun, then we might be in trouble. Right now we're not taking hero damage. I think we can let it be as it is. Is there a better spot for Mariana? Yes. If we put her here, 
We guarantee clearing this lake, uh, clearing this lane. Oh, except this one will spawn a new unit, of course. I think if I was to rebalance this game, then I would probably not let Doom trigger off of obstacles like the urns. That seems a little bit excessive. Now it has shield the Cyclopean Simulate. Now they all attack random targets, so again, it doesn't even matter where I put my units, we just have to hope. But on the other hand, do they even get an attack off? This one will, I think. Well, it depends, because this one will die. Right? It's, yeah, for sure. And then the horror specs goes wild. Killing everything. Uh, I'll let me move my hero up here. No point in punching this one with two. Very good. Any reason to move around? I don't think so. Oh, and the mage went down, yeah. That's the thing, we are good. But him blocking every sec second attack is pretty nasty. For sure. Not unbeatable, though. And... Time to level up the... Shield guy? I'm not so sure. I'm sure he will just get more, maybe base attack, but also health. What we want, though, I think. I, maybe it's overkill leveling the squire to give more power again. But he's got nine health already. Now let's level him once. Maybe if we can get him to go to two attack base, that I think that's quite nice. Wooden buckler for a fighter only again, okay. <laughs> Fifteen health on the squire now. Um three health, two health, seven. You can only have one item. They have the same amount of health right now. And I do want the squire to be on the higher side and in the high end of the spectrum. So it'll be like this. Go. Another reason to level the other fighters so that we have more fighter carrying capacity. Got a pack leader. Target's lowest enemy health enemy. Oh. That is nasty. Bonus objective take no hero damage. We always intend to do that. We've got a corrupted altar. Weaken any character on the targeted tile. I forget what this one does. I've seen it before. It... Yeah, I don't remember. It's not as bad as one might think. It's the main takeaway. 8 health, 8 health, 8 health. Um, we cannot kill any of them in the first round. And you target the lowest health enemy, which would be Jack. And that kind of works out with it being on the trap, then that's fine. Mage of the Sun here is going to kill this Lycanthrope next turn, regardless of what happens. So there's no point in putting the hero up there. Let's double down on this lane and try to take out this Lycanthrope. Attack. This is going to be another hard fight. I'm not sure why I feel like these are so hard. It's like everything balances at the edge of the knife here. What did the weaken do? Next time this unit just takes damage, it's doubled, right? And why didn't you attack Jack? Did I miss something? Hmm. Interesting. I thought for sure he would have been dead by now. I didn't really catch what happened. I 
And why are you down to two health? Oh, because this mage does way more base damage than I give him credit for, I think. One from you. And then you would have had to deal five? Interesting. Again, I'm not sure. Because we didn't trigger the Horde Specs yet. Hmm. Well. This will clear the urn up here. They also all got another power, by the way. Jack is dead. But that is about it. Oh, they have three power each. Yikes. It'll be fine. Oh, they give even more power to each other while they're fighting. Go, Horospex. Yeah, he's gonna kill the mage now. Okay. How much are you doing? Five, four, and one. That's a kill on the pack leader. And go. Oh no. Oh no. I took hero damage. I overlooked it. Ah. Could very easily have been avoided. So that's entirely my bad. And not only did we take damage, we didn't get the bonus then. Bad. Bad. Ah, gotta keep it interesting, right? Another shop. Welcome back. Buy a thing. Thank you. What is this? Restore one health at the round end. The equipped character cannot be poisoned or armored gloves. You can carry a ton of equipment here. Oh, you know what? We give the potion builds to the hero and then we go back to full health in no time. Perfect. And we're about to move into a boss fight. Anything else to do before we do that? No, we spend all of our money. Go for it. Dungeon Boss Simile Prime. Now, I've seen him before and I think I had the achievement for killing him. Although I don't remember that I actually did it, so I'm not sure how I got it. But don't worry about it. We will try to uh, earn that achievement here. He is kind of interesting. The Simulate Prown, Undead Hero. 40 HP, first of all. He only has one attack, but as a follow-up, after he has attacked, he will deal 5 damage to all his allies and gain one attack himself. So he's going to kill his own guys really quickly, if I don't, even if I don't. And then he gains one permanent attack, though. So, I mean, that seems like he's going to clear this uh, this thing. But this one up here <clears throat> is a mirror. The mirror construct. It has no attack, but it cannot be targeted. And it will not be targeted by this ability. So, ability. And I think then we have that question answered whether or not it can be targeted by abilities in here. And at the end of the round, it summons a simile. That is a deteriorating simile, this one. Uh, not a different type. And then, of course, this one will summon more Headless Simile. But he kills them by himself really quickly. Uh, this one has one, uh, 6 HP, so if we deal 1 damage to it, which we will do, then the Simile Prime will kill it. And then that triggers our Horror Specs as well. So, like, this is another one of those, because the opponent is summoning smaller units and then killing them, the Horror Specs will go completely wild here. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great, guys. And I think we'll put him like this because he's attacking straight up into the mid. And we have our 15 HP squire here. So it's gonna be it's gonna take him quite a while to chew, even though he gets exponential damage. Like it's he's not gonna get through here anytime soon. Let's run it. I'm pretty sure we can basically straight up win this and by just let it play out. Indeed. Ah, I should put my hero in a different lane, of course. Go down, up, down, or up. It's mm, tricky. We don't want you in the middle lane because you're soaking up the buff from the squire. 
But uh, no matter which other lane I put it in, it's just going to be wasting your attack then. Oh no, not this turn, because we have four attack. So here we will kill the Headless Simulae with the hero. But again, it doesn't matter, because he would do it for me if I didn't. Yeah. So that's too bad. But whatever. That was 19. We're doing 9 attack. Ah, but this time he blocked with that unit. Hmm. Still fairly sure that we are not going to lose this. But it's proving to be a little bit more tricky than I had predicted. Ah, it's fine. Indeed. Defeat the enemy hero. That should earn us another artifact. And we get a champion sword for a hero only. Nice. Alright. Potion of greater experience will be put on... I think it's the squire then. Well, if we could get more life on the mage, that would be quite nice. So we don't lose it. That's more important than giving it even more attack because we're overkilling more stuff anyway. Oh, those two XP, not... Three, okay. And choose an artifact. After the first round, summon an enemy lesser void wisp. Why? I still haven't figured out what this does. So, oh, there might be this combos off of the horror specs if it's an easy thing to kill. And it might, like we had a, a wisp before and that resulted in me getting some more loot. Maybe that's what the point is. Essence distills does also sound like it might actually be, like produce something, which might be money then. So I'm tempted to try it. Essence Collector is when a non-summoned ally dies, summon a Blood Wisp. Also very cool. Taurian Scripture. Allied Beast gain plus one health. No, no, no. Well, I want to try the Essence Distiller. Let's see what it does. I don't know. But we'll find out. And the Abyss. Now we have gone further than I have done before. To the dungeon beneath the dungeon. Find the witch. Apparently she gets around. Midas Potion. Mage only. Transform a character into a golden statue that can be sold for six gold at campfires. What? The character loses all their equipment. Consumable. What? And then the hero. And we are back to full health. Um... We can put the potion belt on the horde of specs just in case it gets targeted. We can now, it will heal back up. I don't need it on the hero. And the Mate of the Sun, I would prefer it here, but she already has as many items as you can get. We can get one XP here, leveling the mage then. I think I said HP, not XP, but whatever. <clears throat> I was wondering if maybe the final ability power would be to get to triple the amount of power, but that that would have been insane anyway, that's fine. Extra health, extra base attack, all is well. And then with that, before we dive deeper into the abyss, I will say thank you guys as always for watching and stay tuned for the continuation next episode. Kijin out!